We've got farm storage. We've got piglin bartering storage. We've got main storage. This is our main storage, guys. This is actually the first thing I ever made using redstone, and I'm sure a lot of you recognize it as a block-for-block -block recreation of a storage system that Etho designed a long time ago, and our entire mob factory has grown up around it since. So I don't think we're going to be getting rid of this. For me, it's kind of the heart of our entire base, and a fun reminder for me of why I started playing Minecraft in the first place. But as you can see from the shulker boxes haphazardly placed around me, a lot has been added to this game. So we do need to stop thinking of this as our main storage, and and build something proper. According to the internet, there's now 1,050 items we can obtain in survival, 884 of which are stackable. If we eliminate the items I don't plan on keeping in our main storage system, like all the different arrow variants and all the different kinds of coral, I think we'll get the list down to just under 800 items. That's not counting unstackables, but we're going to handle those separately for reasons that will make sense here shortly. Now this is a mock-up of the interface I think I want to go with. We're going to borrow from what we've already done with our farm storage and piglin bartering storage system by having display shulkers. But rather than having each shulker filled with all of one item, we're going to use each of these shulkers in a multi-item sorting system. And if we do some quick math, 27 items on display in each shulker times 10 shulkers per wall times 3 walls equals 810 items. And then we'll add some aesthetic dressing to it. And if you imagine all three walls decorated like this, that should give you a sense for what the interior of the room is going to look like. And I know what you're thinking. What happens when these empty? How do we keep this full? And that is where the magic happens. Here is one of those slices broken off. It's just two droppers facing into our display shulker. And every good storage system needs input and overflow. So for input, we're going to use a 2x hopper speed item sorter. So items will flow into that dropper at 2x hopper speed. And then this clock will send them through these droppers into the shulker box. So for example, we'll take these guys out, stick them in there, activate the clock, and exactly what you would expect. Items are pushed through here at 2x hopper speed, so they'll flow in at 2x, flow through, and arrive in our shulker box at 2x. But what happens when this is full? We need overflow, right? Like if I send spruce planks through, that's full. Stick those in there, and they get stuck. They're going to land in this dropper. They're going to go from here to here, get stuck here. They can't push into here because it's full. So they're just going to get stuck in that dropper. To handle that, we'll turn that off, we're going to stick a track under here and we're going to run a steady stream of hopper minecarts under this to scoop up these overflow items and take them off to bulk storage. So the display shulker will act like a menu, an ordering menu basically. If we need a small quantity of items, we can just grab them from here. And then if we need a large quantity, just as we've done with all of our other storage systems in our world, we can press Q, have that item picked up by something in the floor that goes off and tells the system that we want bulk of that item. In fact, it's going to be even cooler than that. There's going to be times where we take more than we put back, right? Like, let's say we take uh, a little bit of oak and then we go off and do a project and then we come back and we need more oak. We're eventually going to run out of items in our display shulker. So we're going to rig this thing so that by default, pressing Q restocks the display shulker rather than ordering a full shulker. And that'll just become a norm for how we use this thing. Anytime we take items, we hit Q, take some of these, hit Q, this one's already low, hit Q, and then we can leave and go about our business, and while we're gone, the whole display shulker gets restocked so that everything is back at 64 items when we come back. But we'll have a lever we can flick somewhere in the storage room that switches it to full shulker mode. So instead of Q just refilling the display shulker, Q will send us a full shulker box to a collection point somewhere. And if that didn't make sense, that's okay. I've already built a small proof of concept, so let's take it for a spin. But first I want to acknowledge that the multi-item sorting system we're using is not my design. This was put together by Lumifeet, and it just happened to be the perfect sorting system for the interface that we're building. I'm not going to talk a lot about how it works because he does a much better job of that in his video, which I'll link in the description. I encourage you to go watch it. All that matters for us is that it's able to keep up with our 2x hopper speed display shulkers by very quickly distributing the items that we feed into the system to their respective slices. That said, let's take a look at how absurdly overpowered this thing is. I've got 22 stacks loaded into here, and this is one stack from each uh, display shulker that I have programmed so far. So scattered throughout the room, I've already got 22 of these things programmed up. 
So right here, for example, is where the anvils are going to go. Right here is where the diamonds are going to go, and so on. There's 22 of them scattered around, one stack to go to each of them. When we hit the... Oh, and this is... Uh, we'll talk about that lever later. That's not the lever that I mentioned earlier, though. That is that lever. This will turn it into uh, shul full shulker mode versus refill mode. Uh, this lever is for uh, 16 stackables. We'll talk about that in a minute. So now if we uh, press the go button here, lamp turns on to indicate that we are processing these items and they're gonna be pulled out of here 32 items at a time at minecart hopper speed. And then they are carried from there up and around the multi-item sorting array that you just saw made by Lumi Thief. And if we look here, we've already got the anvils flowing in at 2x hopper speed, the diamonds at 2x hopper speed, and these are all processing at the same time. So the jungle fences are done, the doors are flowing in at the same time the smooth sandstone is flowing in, the diorite wall is flowing in, the, uh, I don't know why that's not there yet, it must have been further down in the box. Those are flowing in, those just started flowing in. Yeah, so you get the idea. They don't have to line up behind each other. So technically the system is significantly faster than 2x hopper speed because of the insane rate at which Lumi Thief's multi-item sorting system dumps off the items at each of our slices. Oh, and full disclosure, this thing is not quiet. I'm gonna turn my sound back on here. We'll go blocks, uh, 10, friendly creatures, 10. Yeah, it's pretty loud. <laughs> uh, that's the dropper walls and the mine carts. Uh, the mine carts we can leave on, that's not so annoying. But yeah, that's the one downside with this thing. It is not quiet, but it is wicked fast. So we're going to deal with it and we're going to call this good. There, no more noise. This lever right here is basically 16 stackable mode. So by default, if we put items in here that are 16 stackable, they will not be picked up by our whitelisted storage slices. The system has to be put into a different mode that causes it to run a little bit more slowly, but account for the 16 stackables. Again, watch Lumi Thief's video for a better explanation of what I'm talking about there. If we don't flip that lever, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna gum up the system. The items will just be returned to this collection chest over here. Same thing goes for non-stackables or anything that doesn't have a slot in the list. This lever is currently not wired up to anything, but this will be our full shulker box lever. If it's flipped on, we'll get full shulkers. So if I come over here and hit Q on this item, we're gonna get a full shulker of that item sent over here. If it's off, the system is in restock mode. So I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration here. Uh, I'm gonna restock, I've got five items along here. I'll hit restock on all five of them. And you can see those uh, blocks were taken down into the floor. And then I don't know how long it's going to take. This is just a proof of concept, so it's not really wired up legit. I don't really have bulk storage down there yet, but I wired up a quick proof of concept so we can see what it looks like. Oh, I heard the noise, so yeah, that's going to be the items flowing in. So yeah. That is the general idea. So if we come to our storage room and we need to grab a few items, uh, typical, I think, would be to just do that, and then I need some of these, and eh, I'll just restock it by ejecting the last one, and then when we're done, we just leave, and we can rest assured that all those are going to be restocked after we've left. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Moving on either way, I want to show you how that overflow system wound up working. So I've got a small batch here, anvils, for which we have plenty of room, all 60, actually 63 of those should go into here and then we'll have one overflow. And then the oak planks are completely full. So all 64 of those should go to overflow. And for now, this is our overflow, but we'll eventually connect that up with a giant bulk storage system for every single item so that the functionality we just talked about here works. And this is just a proof of concept. So I've got two other mechanics that are not wired in yet. And that is the incredibly loud uh, dropper wall that powers the whole thing. So if we turn that on, I've got my volume turned down. We're gonna just pretend like it's earplugs, <laughs> Minecraft earplugs that our player is wearing. Uh, but this activates the dropper wall that feeds into, let's turn it down a little bit more than that, better earplugs. So there are droppers behind every single one of these shulkers, as you saw up there in our explanation. 
And those have to fire all the time. There's no way around it. So that's one drawback. Um, and then the second thing is the chests, the chest mine carts that run underneath those droppers to pick up our overflow. So if you recall at the beginning of the video, we have this intermediate dropper where the overflow gets stuck as it tries to push into a shulker box. And these chest mine carts are what travel underneath here, scooping those up. And they go through waterlogged rails to slow them down a bit so that they pick up more uh, items as they go by. And they just cycle around. It's kind of hard to see, but they cycle around underneath every single slice and eventually reach two cart eating stations where they drop off any overflow that they picked up along the way. And again, this would go off to our bulk storage afterward. So, uh, and this is timed just so that we don't lose any uh, mine carts here at the cart eater. This is as fast as you can send them through. If this went one tick faster, we would uh, not be able to keep up here. And that's limited by the hopper speed actually down here that picks up the carts as they get destroyed and drop down through these hoppers. All right, so let's press the go button here. And if we open up the shulker box, we can see what happens. These items are pulled out 32 at a time. Very good. And then pretty quickly we should start seeing the anvils start flowing in. There they are. Good. But the oak planks won't have room. So we'll go look underneath this dropper here. Oh, I think it's actually this one up here. Yep. Okay, so the one that the items would flow into is this one right here, and there you go. That's the cart picking them up as they flow in, and then that cart gets destroyed over here, and we should have a full stack right there, and our one anvil. Very good. For the unstackables, I think I can fit our smart farm storage system under here. So right now the unstackables get sent to our reject chest right here, but it would be pretty easy to have them rerouted down here to a bunch of allay sorters, which I have not really looked into yet, so I don't know how practical that's going to be, but I'm thinking we could have our unstackables sent down here and then run into the smart farm storage system that we've used in previous videos, but have it slightly modified so that it is completely full all the time. So rather than, let's see, grab that, grab that. I don't know that we would do netherite swords either, but um, Instead of being uh, held at a, you know, uh, slightly full level so that there's always room to put the items back in, I don't know that we need that or want that because our item input is so close to us. We could just stick them in there. Um, so we would just keep it completely full. And then if I, we were to ever take items out of it, it would fill back up naturally by way of items being put back into the system. And same as with our Smart Farm Storage system, pressing Q on an item would request full shulker boxes that would be sent up over there to our collection box. And I don't even think we'd have to flip that lever there because uh, this, all this down here, the uh, unsortable storage would be uh, its own discrete system. It'd be completely disconnected from the rest of the system other than the uh, input chest right there feeding our unstackables into this. You guys got all that, right? Because there's a test at the end. Well, not a test so much as homework. I need to know what you guys think. Is this practical? Do we push on and see where this goes? I still have to wire in this bit here that sends off the collection carts and the dropper walls, but for the most part, this is done. It's pretty much ready to go. The uh, next major, uh, like enormous, huge step for this is gonna be putting the bulk storage in underneath. But I don't have any plans to reinvent the wheel on that. I think I'm just gonna take a stock standard bulk storage system from the uh, storage tech community and wire in my own shulker recall system for restocking the display boxes and requesting full shulkers to the uh, collection box. But I don't really foresee that being difficult. It's certainly gonna be time consuming, but uh, I think it'll be worth it. Anyway, I'm going to call this an episode a little bit of a short one, but I just wanted to get this out there and cover the basics of how this thing is going to work when it is finally done, which we should hopefully do in our next episode. But please let me know what you think in the comments. Is this a good idea? Is it the stupidest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But either way, I had fun building it.